Dr. David Omi here. I'm a neurosurgeon and spine surgeon based in Melbourne, Australia. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about treatment options for disc herniation. Now, if you're not sure about what a disc herniation is, check out the other videos on this channel where I explain what a disc herniation or a disc prolapse is. Patients will come to me asking, what are my options for my disc herniation? Now, if you're not in that much pain, the first option is to do nothing. Most disc herniations will get better with time and it may be that just giving time, taking things quietly for a while, modifying your activities to not exacerbate the pain is the best thing for you. Now in most patients by the time they come to see me, that option's already happened and they want some type of intervention. There are basically three different ways that a disc herniation can be treated. The first one involves effort, okay? Now this is a combination of different treatments. It's physiotherapy or physical therapies, a light gym program, yoga, clinical Pilates, going to the gym, swimming or hydrotherapy. This in combination with taking analgesics or other pain relief, anti-inflammatory medications, giving it some time. Often these treatments in most patients, up to 80% of patients, the pain will settle without the requirement for any further intervention. Now, if you've tried these methods and you're still in pain, often patients will want to know, what else can I do to try and help with my pain? The next option is to try cortisone injections. This is basically where a pain physician or a radiologist will inject with CT guidance, cortisone, which is a steroid, and local anesthetic around where the nerve is compressed. Now this type of treatment does nothing to the underlying disc prolapse. It's purely to try and help reduce inflammation in the nerve and try and give you pain relief where the body itself will heal the disc prolapse. Now, it's very common to have one or two injections and most patients, this will be enough to help them, particularly with their leg pain symptoms. Now in patients that have tried physiotherapy, they've tried injections and they're still in a lot of discomfort, the next step is whether their situation is bad enough that they, where they want to consider surgery. Now, the beautiful thing about surgery for a disc herniation is that patients typically get better. Surgery for a disc herniation is very effective, particularly for treating the symptoms of sciatica or the symptoms of leg pain. Now, why would a patient want to consider surgery for a disc herniation? Well, if you've had a leg pain or sciatica, which has lasted for four to six weeks, which doesn't seem to be improving, then considering surgery might be a good option for you. Certainly if you develop weakness in the foot or the leg or problems with going to the toilet related to pressure on nerves going to your bowel or bladder, surgery is usually required in the immediate future. Other reasons why a surgeon might recommend surgery will be based on your MRI findings. In some patients, when I look at the MRI scan, it'll only be a very small disc bulge or disc prolapse, and I think they have a very high likelihood of improving without surgery, so I will recommend conservative, non-operative treatments. In other patients, I'll see a very large disc prolapse causing severe compression in the, of the nerves. Now, in these patients, I know with experience that the chances of them avoiding surgery are very low. So usually I'll recommend early surgery as this is the fastest way that they'll be able to get relief from, their, uh, relief from their pain and get back to normal activities. The benefit for you is that disc prolapses are treatable. Whatever treatment option you take, most patients will get better from the disc prolapse, so it's important to remain positive. For more information about disc prolapse and their treatment options, you can go to my website, www.doneurosurgery.com, or check out more videos on this channel.